over CADIS, here are some of the materials and tools that we used. The Arex Freshwater 501 hook in size 12, Simperfly Nano Silk, 12 aught, Simperfly Tying Wire, 0.1 millimeter, Nature Spirit Beaver Dubbing in Rusty Spinner, Simperfly Simper Flash in Crystal Copper, Nature Spirit Select Cow Elk in Medium Dunn, Whiting Farms Hebert Miner Dry Fly Hackle in Dark Brown Dunn, Scissors, a stacker and a comb, wax, a whip finish tool. Let's go tie an October caddis. All right, thanks Katie. Let's tie a elk hair caddis, but in an October caddis variation. So an October caddis really has two main things that make it an October caddis. Obviously, this is a, a fly that we like to fish in the fall. Um, but it is a much bigger caddis than uh, when Katie and I are typically fishing in the spring or in the summer. Uh, this caddis will tie in a size 12, uh, sometimes 10, sometimes 14s, but typically a size 12. So it's much bigger than our 16s and 18s that we're throwing in the spring. Uh, the other thing is the color. Typically want the body and sometimes wing to be an orange color and the wing can also be a dun color. Uh, today we're going to be using uh, a done wing with an orange body. So let's get tying. In the vise here, we've got a size 12 uh, Arex Freshwater 501 um, loaded up. And <clears throat> we're going to use some Semperfly 12 aught Nano Silk. And when I use Nano Silk, I like to run it through the GSP wax uh, once or twice. That, um, that helps it when I'm starting the, um, the thread on the hook. Put a nice little base of a um, little more sticky thread on the um, on the hook shank and give that wire something that's good to um, good to hold on to. So when we're starting the thread, we want to be really careful that we pay attention to where we start the thread because what I'm doing is I'm starting um, I'm kind of laying down a point right here that I don't want to go past with the with the dubbing, and usually it needs to be about a hook point or about a, a hook eye distance here. And we're cutting GSP or nano silk, um, as opposed to cutting it like normal thread, you wanna put your, um, your scissors on the hook shank and then just rake it across and it'll cut it just like that. So now we'll bring this around and we'll bring it back up to the front. So we've got a nice little layer of, of thread. Um, now we're going to pull out our 0.1 millimeter separate fly tying wire. And make sure you pull enough out that, um, that you have plenty to hold on to. Uh, there's nothing worse than tying a piece of wire than when you go to wrap it, you just have a little teeny tiny end to grab onto. So when we tie this on, we want to cross it, cross it over, capture it, put a couple wraps in, then pull it to length, just like this. Now we want to hold the, the wire on your side of the hook and get it to where it's wrapped all the way down, just like this. Now I want to go ahead and bring the wire over to my side of the hook so it's ready to, to, to wrap. Now the dubbing we're going to use is Nature Spirit Beaver Dubbing, and we'll use this rusty spinner color. And as I said earlier, we want to go with a, with an orange color dubbing um, and really just anything that's going to have some floating characteristics is fine. <clears throat> um, you can use Kapok, you can use uh, super fine, use whatever you'd like. Now when we're putting the dubbing on, we want to make sure we put small pieces on at a time. Don't try to do it all in one or two chunks. And um, we want it to be, it be a nice tight, rope. Now it doesn't have to be super, super thin. This is a caddis after all, and caddises, unlike mayflies, um, have relatively chunky bodies. And I say it's relatively, this is not like a big, big attractor fly. Um, and, uh, and also you don't have to worry so much about having a big taper. Um, but if it does taper, you want the, um, you want the taper to go towards the hook eye. So you want thinner in the back and, and thicker in the, in the front. But, um, but it's more like a tube shape. So now we'll make sure we've got our, 
our dubbing noodle all done. Now, now with bare thread, I'm gonna work my thread back to the bend of the hook. So my first rapid dubbing starts right here. And now I can work it up with touching wraps to make sure we get that nice smooth body, like so. And you see some of those guard hairs. I'm probably gonna pull some of those out. So I got a little bare thread here. It's okay, I'll just wrap it over. I'm probably gonna pull some of these guard hairs out because I don't really, where I'm gonna be putting the, um, we'll just cut them out. Where I'm gonna be wrapping the hackle, I don't really need, if I wasn't gonna put the hackle in, that would be wonderful having those guard hairs in, but when I'm wrapping the hackle, I really don't need that. So you can see I've got a slight taper and that, that looks just fine. All right. So today we're going to use the Hebert Miner um, dark brown done hackle. And we're measuring hackle. What we want to do is we'll pull our hackle gauge and we want to find a feather that, that looks, looks about right. We want to measure it. And once we think it's right, because that one's a middle road 14, um, we want to take our thread and bring it back. That way we can test the, the hackle feather and see how it's going to look. Right, like that. So that one's just a touch on the big side. So let's see if we can find another one. Okay, so let's try this one. And this one, yeah, that one looks right because that one's going just below the hook point. So we'll pull that one off. And I'm gonna strip off the, the stuff on the bottom and just make sure that I've got a nice clean part of the stem ready to um, ready to go. So now we've got our now we've got our stem prepared and I'm going to take a little bit more of this wax. We'll undo this thread here. I'll take a little bit more of this wax. We'll lay this base down. We'll hold our, our feather just the way we want to wrap it, straight up and down. We cross it with one wrap and we'll bring it around and do it one more time. And we've got a long hackle feather like that. Just got to be kind of patient. And we'll bring this back up. And now we pull tight and that locks everything in. So now we're going to wrap the hackle and I want to get one full wrap. So right there's where the hackle feathers start coming out. So I'm gonna do it all the way around here. And now I'm gonna start uh, with open spirals, wrapping the, uh, wrapping the hackle back. So we'll go here and it slides forward. So you get a little extra wrap on that back end. That's fine. Or on or behind the hook eye, that's fine. So we're just gonna smoothly wrap this till we're right here. So now we've got our, our body wrapped and we take our, our wire and we want to do one wrap around here to capture that off. And then we bring it right back up and the key to wrapping wire is just pretend like you don't have hackle there. Just wrap it, wrap it fast. Don't try to miss a fiber here or there. Just wrap it wrap it around. Now we're going to capture this wire off. That's one, two, now we'll pull the wire back, pull everything back, pull tight. So now while we're holding our thread tight, we can helicopter this off our wire down for the next fly. We can trim this off like this. Now I've got a nice little uh, elk hair caddis body made. So the next material we're going to use is going to be the Semperfly Semper Flash in Crystal Copper. So we'll do one piece 
we'll match the tips up. Cut it again, so now we have two pieces. Then we match the tips up again. Let me cut again, so we have four pieces. Now, depending on the size cat as you're going, you might go a few more, you might go a few less. I probably wouldn't go any more than this on this, this size fly. But um, if you were doing a smaller fly, then, uh, then probably half as much would be fine on a size 18. So we will um, capture all the, the crystal fibers like this, bring it around so we're holding like that, and then we're going to put it right on the top of the hook shank a couple wraps in and we'll look at it see how see make sure that we've got the wing right on top and I'm gonna twist up I'm gonna cord up my thread just a little bit um, look at this wing make sure these pulled back and now we've got a nice little wing right on top and this is just the under wing for the uh, for that elk hair so if you need to spread it out, <clears throat> now's a good time to do that. So we'll grab the whole bundle and we want to put our, our scissors basically right up against the, the hook bend. Don't pull the, uh, the crystal flash. Pull it back just a little bit. So I'm gonna go right up against and then give it a little bit extra and that looks fine. Now we'll just kind of redistribute those fibers a little bit. Now we're looking very good. Now we're going to pull the elk out. This is the Nature Spirit Select Cow Elk and Medium Done. And the way I, I get this off the hide is I'll take my scissor tips and I'll put it, I'll just stick it in like this and I'll fold all the, the fibers forward so I can use my fingers and grab uh, the bundle that I want. And I use that my scissor tips again to pull away. So I'm basically making a part in the hair. I'm going to use my scissors and I cut off close to the uh, close to the, to the hide. Now you want to get as close to the hide as possible because um, the longer the fibers are for you to work with makes it easier for you to work with. So we'll set this aside. Now we've got our bundle here that we just cut off. You'll take your, your pointer finger, your thumb, and you'll twist like this. And that's going to open up all the fibers. You'll take a comb and then we'll just comb this out. So as you can see right here, we have quite a bit of, of small, short fibers, and we also have a lot of under fluff, a lot of under fur. Now the under fur is very important to get out of your, uh, of your elk or deer hair, because as we're stacking this, that's what's gonna basically act like, like Velcro and, um, and make, the, uh, make the fibers not stick. So we wanna run our, our hair through the uh, through our, our comb quite a bit to make sure that um, make sure we've got all that junk out. And once you can run your uh, your comb through and you don't it comes out clean, then that's that's exactly what we want. So we'll just give this a little bit more work because this step is is probably one of the more important steps on getting a nice. Uh, clean elk hair wing. Now we're going to take our, our bundle, put it in our hair stacker, and some of the ones will fall off and that's fine. Now we'll stack it down. Now I like to stack on the table and then I'll help hold it to the side and give another couple stacks because a couple taps on the side because most elk hair it has a slight curve to it and that's going to help align the that's going to help align the curve uh, quite a bit. So we'll stack it one more time, stack it on the table, and then we want to tap, tap it on the side because most elk hair fibers have a slight curve to it. That's going to help align the curve a little bit. So now we'll pull this out and then we'll inspect the, the bunch. And if you have, like I do now, it's not a big deal. But if you're like me, one little broken fiber will mess up your day. So um, you'll get a, uh, I usually get a pair of tweezers. Here we go. Just get a pair of tweezers. And if you see right here, I've got one little broken tip. Just grab it, pull it out. And now we're good and straight. 
So we'll stack that one more time. Like I said, stack it down, tap it on the side, and we're ready to go. So now we want to measure the, the wing. So I'm using my, I'm using this place on my thumb where my thumb meets the, the, um, the elk hair as my measuring point. So I basically take the, I basically take the um, bundle and put it right till my thumb hits the, the wing or hits the, the eye. And then I can make an adjustment. And that looks pretty good. So now when I'm cutting this, you want, to, if you just make one quick cut, that's probably fine. You don't want to push, you actually want to pull away just a touch because it'll, um, that'll give you a nice straight, clean uh, cutting point. I want to go ahead and put a little color on my thread. One of the nice things about nano silk is, especially in white, is that you can color it whatever color that you want. So you don't have to, um, um, you don't have to have a whole bunch of colors. I'd typically just use white and then color it to what I think is necessary. So now I, I pull my bundle back to where the cut ends line up with the eye. And then I bring this around, bring my thread around, down, and I pull up just a little bit, just a little bit to where it starts creasing the hair. Then I put another wrap and now I'll pull, now by pinching the bundle, I pull tight. And that, that gives us a nice elk hair wing. I can kind of pull up on this, put a couple wraps. And now we're ready to whip finish. So we'll put our whip finish tool, bring this around. And we're, we're putting our thread in between those cut ends of the elk hair and the, um, the hook eye. And one of the nice things about using that technique is now that we've um, we made one cut and we mushroomed everything out and we've got every single fiber here is the, is the exact same length. So we have a nice little round head that has a good silhouette underneath. It's going to be very, uh, it's going to have a lot of floating characteristics and we can play with this, pull the, the wing down. Make sure we've got the <clears throat> the good underwing um, under the fly, so we've got a good um, good silhouette. All right, now as a final step, once the fly is complete, we're going to rotate it over, and we're going to pull our Sally Hansen's out, and we're going to put just a small drop right here, right there, right behind the hook eye into the, our whip finish and into our thread wraps. And what that drop's gonna do is it's gonna soak in uh, to our thread, but it's also gonna soak in to the, um, to the butt ends of the elk hair and provide some extra durability. And I like to just run a wire through that hook eye just to make sure it stays clear. And now we've completed our elk hair caddis in a October caddis flavor, and that's it. Again, here's a list of the tools and materials that we use. But feel free to make your own substitutions on materials as, as you see fit. If you have any questions about this fly, feel, feel free to comment in the comment sections below. And we look forward to seeing you on the next time and happy time. Bye bye. Hi guys, thanks for watching. And if you enjoyed this, please like or subscribe. We'll see you next time.